sure. What else do we put on our shopping list? Oh, what a mouth-watering smell. Paima would know the aroma of biryani anywhere. Let's go get some. Uh, we can still add it to the list. Well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. Wasn't expecting to see you here. <sighs> Hello there. Oh, it's been quite a while. Ah, huh. so you two are still hanging out together. Here, didn't you say last time that you were gonna head back to the desert? <laughs> I said I was going to resign from being her bodyguard. Not that our friendship was over. We're still the best of friends. The Homayanis also still post jobs from time to time. Their pay is always generous, so me and the other mercs never pass them up. I told Dia to just stay at our place when she took one of those jobs a few days ago. My parents were delighted. They even said that it always felt like we were missing someone whenever Dia wasn't around. <laughs> that sounds like something they would say, all right. They're always so welcoming. Anyway, the job is already taken care of. So I was going to head back to the brigade as soon as I finished a little shopping. But the master kept insisting, and I ended up staying for another day. You can stay for as many days as you want, Dia. Father hasn't even gotten around to treating you to his best dishes yet. <laughs> you know I'm not the kind of person to stay put in one place like that, my lady. Don't worry, though. There'll always be next time. What? She said they'll treat you to the best dishes! I can't believe you can still refuse that! But, but wait, didn't you say last time that you would take me on a trip to the desert? What? There are so many places I still haven't visited yet. I'm sorry, my lady, but no can do. There's still a few things I need to take care of back at the brigade. Besides, the desert hasn't exactly been the most peaceful place lately. Oh, come on. Not this again. That's also what you said last time and the time before that. I know, I'm sorry. Just give me some more time, and I promise I'll plan the best trip ever for you. All right, fine. To be perfectly honest, it's not that I wanted to go, it's more like... I feel like something is off about you lately. Ever since you first set foot on the estate a few days ago, you've been acting anxious and even paranoid. Have you been delaying our trip because you've run into some kind of trouble? Nah, are you kidding? You're worrying too much. Would you swear on that? Friends shouldn't lie to each other, you know. I wouldn't pry any further if you're willing to swear on what you just said. But if something really is bothering you, then just tell me. You know I'll help you however I can. Mm. Oh, looks like Junior Zod was onto something. You're too perceptive, my lady. Seems I can't hide anything from you. Uh, I just thought that nothing good could come out of telling you about the messy happenings of mercenaries. N knowing too much only leads to more trouble. Mercenary life is a dog-eat-dog -dog world where Mora reigns supreme. Everything operates on a completely different set of rules. That doesn't change anything about what I just said, though. We're still friends, and I can only support you if I understand what's bothering- My lady... You're not gonna stop until you drag it out of me, are ya? All right, I'll share what I know. Let's go somewhere else first. This isn't exactly the best place for a discussion. Okay, let's talk here. Just try not to draw any extra attention. As you may already know, the Aramites have both a lot of mercenaries and a complex organizational structure. Many mercs are no different than me. Just going around looking for jobs to earn some mora. My brigade is called the Blazing Beasts. We're not a large group, but every member is loyal and brave. However, not all Aramite brigades are like mine. Some are willing to cross all kinds of lines for the sake of mora. The most notorious is a faction known as Deshret's Relics. Deshret's Relics? Judging from the name, they must really look up to... Yep, you got it. I've heard that you've already crossed paths with Ain al Akmar. They're one of the groups under the Relic's banner. Oh, you mean the group that tried to sell us the Divine Knowledge Capsule? Yeah, they weren't friendly at all. Deshret's Relics is composed of many smaller brigades like Ain al Akmar. 
The Relic's headquarters issues orders to all brigades under his control. On any other day, I would want nothing to do with them. Unfortunately, though, the brigade that's stirring up trouble now is none other than Dakan al Akmar. Dakan? Uh, I think it means beard or something. Believe me, it's a really stupid name. I found it insufferable for years. Anyway, the real issue is that Dakan al Akmar is led by my father, Kusela. Say what now? I think I'm starting to understand your anxiety now. But what did they do? I won't go into details, my lady. But they've been involved in a lot of violent incidents. We're talking hundreds. Hundreds? Yep. The scenes tend to be quite gruesome, too. They strip the victims of all their valuables before murdering them. Not only have they targeted merchant caravans and ordinary citizens, but other mercenary brigades as well. That's beyond terrible. They won't even spare their own kind. I don't know how Deshret's relic sees it. All I do know is that Dakan al Akmar has become more and more aggressive over the last few years. If I don't do something about them, then even my brigade or the people of Aru village could become their next target. I just wish I knew what's driven him to do this. How can your father do such terrible things? I don't know. People change. He's always been pretty pathetic. But at least in the past, there were still a few lines that he wouldn't cross. That's setting the bar pretty low. I mean, if he was even remotely decent, then why would I have to leave the brigade and cut all ties with him? He was loud and foolish, with no real sense of purpose. Instead of doing anything useful, he spent most of his time drinking and chasing after women. Of course, the other brigade members were just like him. Their ruckus would go on night after night. Sounds like a nightmare. What about your mother? Did she ever step in to stop them? Unfortunately, I never knew my mother. Uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, Dia. I, I didn't know. It's all right, my lady. That's pretty common in mercenary circles. Didn't I mention that my father was chasing after women? I was the result of one of those encounters with some random person. He told me that he wasn't sure who my mother was. And in any case, she never came to see me. He'd say, you'll be fine as long as you remember to stick with dad. But even then, he left most of the parenting to the brigade. The one thing I do remember is that he used to tell me stories. But the problem was that he had terrible taste. He only knew a few stories, and even those tended to be pretty stale. They were tales of desert warriors defeating dragons in the forest, or stories of mercenaries rescuing princesses from rebel armies. Sounds like your typical fairy tales. More or less, yeah. They were interesting maybe the first or second time around, but after about 20 repeats, they started to get a little dull. He seemed to think those stories were the best things ever, though. He was so into them that he'd call the whole brigade over and make them perform the whole thing as a play. Even the toys he gave me would all be story props. I'd get helmets, shields, and toy swords. It was only much later when I realized that the shows were more for him than they ever were for me. What in interesting guy yeah i've always found him pretty childish but that was something i could just shrug off i had no reason to despise him until i grew up and learned the true face of deshret's relics for myself looting blackmail violence and fraud they not only accepted such heinous acts they would even openly boast about them no one in the brigade was any kind of hero. Instead, my father and his cronies were more like the bad guys that needed to be taken down. Did they really think that as long as they didn't do any of that stuff right in front of me, I would never know? I think I can understand your feelings. The difference between perception and reality must have hit hard. Yeah, but don't worry, my lady. It's all water under the bridge to me now. I had a huge argument with my father and left that place behind for good. 
I'm not investigating them due to any bitter feelings I still have towards my father. I just want to protect those that are close to me. Yeah, I told the boys to gather as much information as they could. Most of the reports concern violent incidents, but there's also some talk of smuggling. I see. Uh, but isn't this investigation incredibly dangerous? It is, but every mercenary lives life on the edge. It's a lifestyle that I enjoy. That may be true, but it'll be impossible for those who care about you not to worry. Well, now you get why I didn't want to share any of this with you. What should we do? They both have valid concerns. Huh? But there's no need for you to get caught up in this mess, too. Well, he's super tough, so if he went into the desert with you, then Paimon bets the problem will be solved in no time. Hmm. I'm inclined to agree. I'd feel a lot more at ease if you took him along to help. I'll wait for news from you in the city until then. Please, stay safe. Hmm. I'm honored that you care so much for me, my lady. All right, then let's get moving. Our first stop will be Caravan Rebot, where we can catch up a bit with my fellow mercs. Hey, dear, you're back. <laughs> Are these two friends of yours? <laughs> Likewise. And there's no need to be so formal with us. We're a pretty casual crew. Anyway, uh, since we've got a newcomer, let me fill you in on what the Khan al akmar has been up to lately. They've become extremely aggressive. Apparently, even their own now have become acceptable targets. They even attack other relics brigades, just the same as any other mercenary brigade. Even the most ferocious beasts still protect their own. And it sounds like they've thrown that straight to the wind. <sighs> That's right. Once they've collected enough loot off the other mercenaries, they sell it off to a different brigade, or, or turn to merchants on the black market. A portion of their profits is immediately exchanged for more food and weaponry to be used in their next violent operation. Yeah, and it really makes you wonder why they're so desperate for Mora. A few days ago, Isham and I trailed them for a while, and even disguised ourselves as merchants to conduct trade with them. We were able to learn a few things from the exchange. Rather than saying they're out to plunder and hoard Mora, it'd probably be more accurate to say that they're experiencing an internal power struggle. Wait, a power struggle? You heard me right. The vast majority of their victims are mercenaries from the other brigades of Deshret's relics. If their only goal was Mora, they could have gone after anybody. The targeted nature of their attacks points to a power struggle between the different brigades within the relics. That's the only plausible explanation we have. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find out anything more specific. It seems they're also trying to keep things under wraps. Oh, one last thing we discovered was that over the past few years, as the Khan al Ahmar became more and more active, Deshret's relics as a whole became a lot weaker. Hmm, it sounds mighty strange to me, too. Harun, you can leave the rest of the investigation to us. Gotta say, though. I didn't expect you to go on a whole undercover mission during the few days I was gone. Sounds like you were really putting your necks on the line, no? <sighs> nah, it was nothing. We're just as concerned about the situation as you are. The Khan al Ahmar is your father's crew, after all. <laughs> what he said. Besides, Dia, haven't you done more dangerous things than all of us combined? 
What we did is nothing compared to your experiences. Yeah. And while they went to talk with Dakan al Akmar, I took a look at the last camp they attacked. Any survivors of the attack were already long gone. There was nothing of value left in the camp. Ah, Hisham and Khalaf. You're here too. We rushed over as soon as we saw you come into Caravan Rebot. Although this new friend of yours looks a little green behind the ears, I'm sensing a special vibe from him. Now that we know you'll have a capable partner with you, we can also rest easy. Hey, what about Paimon? Feel anything special? Oh, uh, you're also planning to tag along with them? Of course! Paimon is the Traveler's most important guy! Wherever he goes, Paimon will follow! Oh, in that case, then you'd better take care of her too, Dia. Uh, don't underestimate Paimon! <laughs> don't worry about her. She may look tiny and helpless, but she's been through just as many battles as the Traveler here. Even if she had only survived on sheer luck, then that alone would still make her quite formidable. <laughs> I had no idea. I guess I shouldn't judge by appearances. <laughs> oh, one other thing, Dia. When you're free, why don't you update the deputy about your upcoming schedule? We held another recruitment event a few days ago, but everyone only came to see the flame main. You weren't around at the time, so people were pretty disappointed to only find our crew of rough, unkempt guys. The deputy put a lot of effort into the event, but it was basically for nothing. Only a few people chose to stay, and that really got to him. Ah, uh, sorry to hear that. I'll be sure to bring him some great liquor next time. I left in a hurry, and I couldn't make it back in time for the event. Gotta admit, I can understand their disappointment, though. You're our brigade's main selling point, after all. Now, if only the deputy could figure out a way to bring a few more smoking hot members into our ranks. <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming. Remember the last time I invited a couple gals into the brigade? You all just froze up with your mouths gaping like a bunch of scarecrows. The awkward silence and weird expressions left quite the impression on them. They were originally interested in joining us, but after that, they both told me they were too uncomfortable to stick around. Hey, didn't we agree to never bring that up again? Huh? Wait, are you serious? Why have I never heard about this? I don't think you were part of the brigade yet. Are you kidding me? I missed a once-in-a-lifetime moment like that and you weren't even gonna tell me? <laughs> all right, all right. We can tell you about it later. Now's not the time. Hey, don't you try to change the subject. You and Hisham get your butts over here and tell me everything right now. Uh, are they always like this? <laughs> More or less. There aren't many rules or graces when it comes to mercenaries. We're used to just speaking our minds. If someone starts getting under your skin, you just yell right back at them. And if that doesn't put an end to it, eh, then you just challenge them to a fight. But we also don't tend to take many things too seriously. Being direct and getting it all out of your system as soon as things come up is better than keeping everything bottled up, never talking about it. That's also why I never spare their feelings when I talk to them. If I want to laugh, I'll laugh. If I'm angry, then I'll unload on them. It's hard to stop once you get used to it. Though, I can never do that when I'm with the Homoyanis. <clears throat> hey, knuckleheads! Can you at least tell me the rest of the intel before you go back to your bickering? <laughs> yeah, you hear her, Holoff? Told you we gotta focus on the investigation first. <laughs> <clears throat> I drew up a map. Right here is the spot. There you'll find the merchant caravan responsible for getting rid of Dakan al Ahmar's looted goods. All you gotta do is wait and ambush them in the evening. They'll have no idea what hit them. Perfect. Thanks for that. Be sure to pass my regards to everyone else in the brigade as well. Will do. You stay safe, Dia.
This should be the place. Let's find a spot to hide and bide our time. It's gonna come down to a fight one way or another, so let's all be careful. No need to worry. He knows his way around a fight. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. What I meant is that we probably shouldn't go too hard on the enemy. After all, we still need to get information out of them. Ah, here they come. You ready? Let's not give them a chance to react and end this quickly. You're... the Flame Mane. Good. That saves me an introduction. All right. Time for a little talk. Are you buddies with Dakana Lakmar now? Tell me, what are they after? <laughs> you know the code of being a mercenary just like everyone else. The first rule is to never divulge key information about our employer. What makes you think I talk? <laughs> that might have worked on an amateur. But I know you're just looking to protect your reputation. Think about it, though. What's your reputation worth if you won't have the other tools you need to succeed in this line of work? Tools like, I don't know, your limbs or eyes? You've got five seconds. You might want to think twice about how much your employer's information is worth to you. Whoa! I'm not joking around. We can do this the easy way or the painful way. Two seconds! I'll save you the trouble. Huh? Are you crazy? <sighs> he tried to bite off his own tongue. Quick, search the area for any first aid supplies. I definitely didn't expect him to go that far. Thankfully, the wound wasn't too deep, and he just passed out from the pain. But why would he be so extreme? Uh, I just wanted to test his mettle. You can get a lot of mercenaries to talk just by threatening them. I didn't expect him to be willing to go through so much pain just to deny us some intel. Well, he's out cold for now. We could wait for him to wake up, but maybe it's... Not a good idea to interrogate him any further. What should we do? Yeah, don't worry about it. It'll be a waste of time to interrogate him again after that. He might just hurt himself again if we start asking. <sighs> there are lots of goods around here. Let's search the area. Maybe we'll be able to find something. <sighs> I'm really sorry. Something. Let me take a look. If this really is a merchant caravan, they should have a record of their transactions. Hmm. Yep. I see an entry for Dakana Lakmar right here. Kusela, Idrisi, Bashar, and Tikriti. All familiar names. Dakana Lakmar has been trading for a hefty supply of food, weapons, and medicine. It seems that in the past, they used to receive some canned knowledge as well. 
this caravan is just one link in their logistics chain. Once in the rainforest, the caravan will exchange the looted goods for Mora, and the funds will then be passed to a specific person. That person will then pack the caravan full of necessary goods, which will then be brought right back to Dakana Lakmar. Wait, why is there no Mora value recorded for the final transaction? Hmm? No value? Yeah. Every transaction before the last one was marked with an exact amount of Mora, but the final one, where they paid for everything to be brought back to the desert, was simply marked as delivered. Hmm, perhaps. But they couldn't have known how much they would make off selling the loot. Do they not care about profit margins at all? Anyway, the next part's the records of the goods themselves. There are a lot of entries. Everything was probably sourced from the rainforest. Huh? What's wrong? Shazaman Homayani? Homayani? You mean Dunyarzad's family? Uh, could, could it just be another family with the same last name? Hmm, I'd be surprised to find someone with the exact same first and last name. Shazaman Homayani is Dunyarzad's father and the head of the Homayani family. Just what the heck is going on here? I'm sorry, you're right. I'll consider what we found and not jump to conclusions just yet. But what this piece of paper confirms is that the Homayani family has been providing goods to Dakana Lakmar. What if the Homayanis have been kept in the dark and don't know they've been trading with Dakana Lakmar? That's a possibility, but if that was the case, why is this caravan specifically named Shazaman as their person of contact? They could have just as easily bought goods such as food and medicine directly from Caravan Rebot or Port Ormos. Yeah, funding violence and looting. The Brigade gets the goods, and he is paid the proceeds from the sale of the loot. But why would he do something like this? It's not like the Homianis are in need of money. I honestly have no idea. I've been to their estate many times, and I've never noticed anything suspicious. The only potentially large expenditure I could think of would be the treatment cost for Dunyarzad's Elazar. Maybe they borrowed a lot of Mora in the past? But that's still just a speculation. I don't think the Master would stoop so low to make Mora. You're probably right. I know my lady's personality, and she wouldn't deliberately keep something like this from us. But... What should we do now? All we found is just another mystery! Hmm... If you ask me, we already have no choice but to confront her about this. I'm not worried. It's too early to make a verdict yet. I still have faith in the Homayanis. Let's go find my lady again. We'll tell her everything, and see if she's willing to lend us her support. If we're lucky, we can not only figure out the mystery of this paper, but also follow the trail of breadcrumbs to the people responsible at Dakana Lakmar. Uh, Dia, are you sure this is the best decision? What if instead of getting the help we need, we just end up revealing everything we've discovered to the enemy? I've considered that possibility, but even still, I want to tell her what we found. I think I owe her that much. True friendship is built on trust. She showed genuine concern for me when we first brought up the topic. I can't repay her kindness with doubt and suspicion. That's not how I deal with people. You're right. Paimon wants to trust Dunyarzad too. Yeah. Let's pay another visit to Sumeru City. back my lady 
Oh, you're back a lot sooner than I expected. You mustn't have run into any trouble then. Well, how did it go? Uh, what did you come up with? Actually, we're still investigating. It's just that we've discovered something strange. I see. The clues you found have led you back here, in the city? Something like that, yeah. You all look a little dispirited. Whatever you found must not have been very encouraging after all. Why don't you discuss it with me? Maybe I'll be able to say something to cheer you up? It's okay, my lady. It's not so much about me being upset with my father or anything like that. Uh, how should I put this? So something is wrong. Even the Traveler and Paimon have been uncharacteristically quiet. On any other day, Paimon would have already waved to me with a smile and shouted, Junior Zod, we're back! <sighs> so tell me, what happened? Uh, well... <sighs> My lady, please prepare yourself for what we're going to tell you next. It concerns the Master. The Master? Y you mean... My father? Okay, I understand. But don't worry about me. I'll listen as attentively as I can. My father has been supplying goods to Dakan al Akmar? Yeah, it makes as little sense to us as it does to you. I've never doubted the Master's integrity, so I'm having a real hard time rationalizing how he could ever support an infamous brigade like them. Maybe he's not actually aware of the full story, and just stumbled into the deal by accident. I can't help but agree with the Traveler. Huh? You mean you feel the same way, Dunyarzad? Thank you for sharing all this information with me. Since you've told me everything you know, I should also tell you about some doubts that I've been harboring for quite a while. In the past, I thought that my father hired a bodyguard for me, so... That I wouldn't run away and get lost. However, there are plenty of capable mercenaries in the core of 30. Why did my father go out of his way to hire Dia? Uh, about that. Well, the Homayanis really needed bodyguards, so they reached out to the Blazing Beasts. Later, the Master told me that I was one of the best mercenaries he'd ever seen, and that I should stick around to become one of his bodyguards. He offered me a pile of Mora, so... I just signed on. Well, but that didn't really answer my question. It, just think about it. Why did my father specifically reach out to the Blazing Beasts? Uh, maybe the Core of 30 just didn't have anyone available, or maybe someone recommended us? I've never given it too much thought. I think I get what you're saying. You think none of this was a coincidence? Precisely. At first glance, nothing seems strange or out of place. But there are many parts of the story that don't actually make any sense. If my father had always been in contact with the Khan al Akmar, then it would make sense for him to bring Dia into her house. You mean the goal all along was to get Dia to be your bodyguard? No, 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 that's too much of a stretch. I cut all ties with my father a long time ago. He has no control over my life anymore. But that still doesn't rule out the possibility that your father has still been trying to influence your life without you knowing. Hmm. So, the Master was not likely an innocent victim in all of this? Sorry we put all this on you so suddenly, Dunyarzad. It's okay, Paimon. I should actually be thanking you. Regardless of his reasons, if my father has truly been funding a violent group of mercenaries, then it's my duty to bring him back to reason. But is that really the right thing to do? My father has committed many atrocities and deserves all the punishment that he has coming to him. I have zero sympathy for him. You may call me an ungrateful child, but my feelings will remain the same. However... The Homayani family has treated me with nothing but generosity and kindness. If we decide to investigate this further, we could end up implicating the entire Homayani family. I would be biting the hand that's fed me over all these years. Dia... It's alright, Dia. If anyone were to ask, you could always just say that I'm the one who instructed you to get to the bottom of this. You don't have to do that, my lady. I'm not conflicted because I'm afraid of taking responsibility. 
Besides, you're the one we should all be worried about right now. Hey! It's still too early to give up hope! Uh, what was that thing about friendship again? Right! Yeah! Trust! You said that yourself, Fia! Besides, there's no point on getting all riled up before we've confirmed all the facts! Thank you, everyone. That makes a lot of sense. I guess I should always remember the trust that I've placed in people. In which case, my lady, could you ask the master to come out and have a chat with us? Sure thing. I also hope he'll be able to give us a logical explanation. Let's meet at the usual place then. A uh, usual place? Thank you for coming, sir. Please allow me to introduce these two. This is the Traveler, and next to him is his travel companion, Paimon. Ah, yes. My daughter has mentioned them from time to time. It's a privilege to finally meet them in person. But we may skip all the pleasantries for now. What is the important matter you wish to discuss with me today? Well, we wanted to bring this transaction record to your attention. There's something on this record that we're all pretty curious about. So, that's what you found? Huh. Seems like I can't keep everything from you much longer. If you wouldn't mind, we'd like an explanation. Well, it's a long and difficult story. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. What I do know, though, dear, is that the truth will bring you no solace. If anything, it will likely cause you a great amount of anguish. Wait, me? Yes. I understand perfectly why you came to see me. And I am touched by your collective commitment to do the right thing. But knowledge always comes at a price. And sometimes, as they say, ignorance is bliss. Your father, Kusela, and I both believed that. Of course, you have the right to seek and learn the truth, but... I must warn you, the facts of this matter may reduce everything you've built for yourself into sand, blowing, and... If you must proceed, then Kusela's heartfelt efforts will also fade into the wind like a fleeting mirage. His... heartfelt efforts? I, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm not sure I follow. I've made it this far in life without a single drop of my father's support. I, I have my own ideals and ways of looking at the world, as well as people and causes that I've chosen to cherish and fight for. None of these things have anything to do with him. I came here today to support you as the head of the Homiyani family. No warning will change my stance on that. <sighs> I understand. Then let me tell you a little story. Our family once needed to take a trip to the desert when Dunyazad was just a baby. Along the way, we were attacked by bandits. They had superior numbers and quickly overpowered our bodyguards. When all seemed lost, a group of passerby Aramites lent us their support. Those Aramites were Kusela's brigade, Dekan al Ahmar. Kusela's men told me that the attackers were Aramite mercenaries, just like themselves. I was shocked. Why would Dukan al-Ahmar go so far to save us and not spare the fellow Aramites? Kusela was grinning and walked over to play with baby Dunyazad. She was startled by his unfamiliar face and nearly started crying. Really? I... I never knew. He said that he had no particular reason to help us. He just took pity on us because he had a daughter about the same age. We started talking about our children and... I sensed that he was a devoted father to repay his kindness. I hired his brigade to help out at our estate for a time and offered everyone generous remuneration. So that's what happened. It was many years before I saw him again. I almost didn't recognize him the next time he came knocking on my door. The man I knew to be strong and healthy had been reduced 
to a, a shell of a himself. He couldn't even walk anymore without his cane. So what happened to him? He was perfectly fine when I left the brigade. I'm not too sure myself. The only thing that didn't change was his cheery disposition. He said there was absolutely nothing to worry about and that he had gotten into a fight. That was all. He then suddenly asked me if Dunyarzad, now that she had grown, would need a bodyguard of her own. At the time, Dunyarzad was going through a particularly severe bout of her Elazar. There was no need for her to have a bodyguard when she could barely leave the house. But he kept coming back to the topic. Come on, it, it never hurts to be safe. How do you know a bodyguard won't come in handy one day? I was completely lost at first. Until he recommended the Blazing Beasts. And in particular, a mercenary named Dia. So he was the one who recommended Dia to you? Indeed. He didn't say it out loud. But it was clear that he saw Deshret's relics as an evil group who would eventually corrupt every member in their ranks. He was already beyond redemption, but he hoped that he would be able to detach his daughter from the vicious world of mercenary life. If Dia could stay in my house and keep working as a bodyguard, then gradually her affinity for the desert would decrease and she'd be able to leave her previous life behind. And that's why you offered her such generous compensation? Yes, but not just because of that. From the moment that he asked me for that favor, I also began to see Dia as my own daughter. And that's also why I tried to persuade you to stay when you asked for permission to leave. I was willing to spend however much it took. Kusela saved my daughter and I all those years ago in the desert. I could never refuse him entrusting his daughter to me. <sighs> he was always like that. Acting like he's oh so smart and self-righteous. Kusela said that he'd reimburse me for a portion of Dia's fees. I refused to take any Mora from him, but... He'd always send me funds anyway. Eventually, I just accepted them as a token of his gratitude. And that went on for a while until I received another letter from him a few years ago. The letter contained a request to help him buy food, weapons, medicine, and even explosive materials. Wait! Isn't that around the time that Dakan al Ahmar started becoming more aggressive? That's right. When I started to hear some nasty rumors, I became wary. I wanted to meet him face to face to discuss things. But by then, he was no longer receptive to my requests to talk. If I had to guess, it's probably because he doesn't want to put Dia at risk. That thought occurred to me as well. I figured that he probably came to me uh, for help because he had nobody else to turn to. I after some deliberation, I decided to send him some food and medicine. I turned down all his requests for explosives and weaponry. I am aware that even such a reduced gesture of support could lead to others coming to harm, but I could not simply reject his plea for help. In the end, it probably was the wrong decision. I plugged my ears to the rumors and just chose a solution that made me feel least guilty about myself. If you can, please tell me where he is now. None of the things he's doing right now make any sense if he's just trying to keep me from getting tangled up in his world. If all he wants to do is steer clear of me, then maybe he shouldn't have brought me into this world in the first place. Oh no, Dia, please don't feel that way. I'm just angry because I can't wrap my head around any of his actions. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't think I can do it. But I guess you do have a point. We haven't uncovered the whole truth yet. We still need to figure out his exact actions and reasoning for these last few years. I'll do my best to help. Of course, anything between the two of you would need to be resolved between you and him alone. I don't know Kusela's exact whereabouts. Outside of supplying his brigade with some goods, I, I tried my best to avoid getting involved any further with him. However, there's a man on the list named Jawed. He used to be a mercenary in the desert and is now a member of the Corps of Thirty. He's responsible for supplying weapons and liaising with the Dakan al-Akhmar's merchant caravan. I think he should know Kusela's whereabouts. 
I've heard that he likes to have a few drinks alone and enjoy the cool wind at night outside the tavern. Maybe you'll be able to find him there. Understood. Thank you, sir. Then, I guess this is bye for now, unless... I'll stay and be with my father here. To be honest, I'm still a little dazed and haven't finished processing everything quite yet. My father has indeed done something wrong, but if I think about it, I'm also not sure if there was a right way to handle this problem. I feel like our only course of action is to turn everything we know over to the core of 30 and let them render judgment. Yes. I am prepared to accept whatever verdict they choose. It's time to face my mistakes. you guys I know what you've been up to smuggling weapons to violent brigades in the desert while working for the core <laughs> pretty bold if you ask me Shh. keep your voice down how do you know all that come with me we should take this elsewhere I'll be happy to talk things over once we're somewhere private this place should do all right, back to my question. How did you all know about me? Don't worry about that for now. You know what kind of punishment you'll face once we report you to the core, I assume. Wait, wait, wait. There's no need to jump the gun. Let's talk this out. What are your terms? So what's in it for you anyway, Mora? Uh, well, I was a little tight on money at the time, and Kusela took good care of me in the past. I waited in my mind, and I couldn't find a reason to turn the opportunity down. I wouldn't only be helping my benefactor, but I could also make some quick mora. Let me tell you how it is. We're investigating Dakana Lakmar, and we're gonna put an end to their operations. If you provide some help for us, then we might just put in a good word later to reduce the terms of your punishment. Hey, why don't we discuss this a little first? Listen, I made quite a bit of mora for my last run. Just give me a number, and I'm sure we can... Shut it. My patience is running out. You should know when a mercenary is after something other than money. All right, all right, sheesh. But you gotta promise you'll put in some nice words for me later. They're always on the move. Here's the spot they were at the last time I made my delivery to the desert. Feel free to go have a look. I'm just telling you, though, it's not on me if they're not there anymore. Sure. And then you can forget about any nice words from us. Hey, come on. Now you're just being unreasonable. Really? And how do I know you're not leading us straight into a trap? Don't forget, you're the one with no bargaining chips. All right, I get it, I get it. Why don't you go take a look, and if they're not there anymore, I'll try to figure out something else for you all. <laughs> now that's more like it. Let's move. And as for you... Try to stick around the city until we get back. You don't want us to call the folks from the core and have them drag you back to the city.
Seems like we're in luck. That should be their camp right up ahead. Let's go. We'll finally get to the bottom of this ourselves. I'm here to see Kusela. Tell him to get out here. Why are you here? Haven't you all done enough? Oh, so are you also here to stop us? Stay out of this! It's got nothing to do with you! Enough fighting. We all know each other, and I don't want to take things too far. Just bring Kusela to me. There's no use hiding him anymore. Uh... Did you understand a single word I just said, or do I need to bash your skull in some more? All right, everyone. Let's all just calm down for a second. Um, Dia, the boss can't come out and see you anymore. He died a long time ago. What? Seems like you've been out of the loop for a while. Guess that's for the best, though. At least, that's what the old man wanted. When did he die? What happened to him? A few years ago, Kusela broke up Dakan al Ahmar and went to the Deshret's Relic's headquarters by himself. So is that when you guys started acting up? We would prefer to call it taking revenge. Every last person in Deshret's Relic's must pay in blood for what they did. <sighs> Let me start from the beginning. Dia, do you know how the head of the relics maintained order internally? Overwhelming strength and unquestionable authority? Those were a part of it, yes. But just those on their own weren't enough. They had another tool at their disposal. They called it a person's record. Regardless of whether they joined by their own will or were coerced, every person in Deshret's relics were forced to leave a record of themselves at headquarters. Whether it be their deepest sin, some unforgivable act, or their most immoral exploit, the record served both as a symbol of loyalty and the perfect material for blackmail. That's precisely it. Every one of us have a record. Me, Bashar, Tikridi, and all the boys who grew up with Dia and ended up joining our ranks. But you, Dia, you were never asked to provide a record, were you? I... I never even knew this was a requirement. You were probably the only person in all of Deshret's relics who didn't know about it. Ever since you were born, Boss had been trying to shield you from this organization's sinister rules. Not only that, but he also banned all of us from committing any nefarious acts. He said he'd take care of the dues we had to pay regularly to headquarters. But in the end, he was just an ordinary person. What could he do? He was forced to go to headquarters again and again to account for missed dues and incomplete records. He'd come up with all kinds of excuses and get beaten up as a result. We all knew he was doing that for you. He wanted to get you out of this world no matter what it took. And that's why he became a shell of himself and couldn't walk without a cane. Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know about any of this, and I'd never seen him get injured or beaten. Because you were too young at the time. How would you ever tell between wounds from a beating and wounds from battle? When you left home after that final argument with him, he seemed to age by a decade overnight. Even his hair went gray. So, even the Blazing Beasts were... Yep. It was all his doing. Had he not arranged them to come to you, you probably would have been reduced to a pulp before you ever left the desert. A few years ago... Boss said he needed to make another trip to headquarters. He was already pretty weak then, and we all assumed he was going to get beaten again. I suggested that he hand the role of leadership over to me, but he said there was no longer any need, since the Khan al-Ahmar would soon be no more. His words made no sense to me, but that night, we heard that a massive fire tore through headquarters and raised everyone's records to ash. Everyone gained their freedom that night. Many members fled, 
Not just from our ranks, but from the other brigades as well. But how could we leave with a clear conscience? All of us who knew exactly what- The boss can't have just died for nothing. Those heartless jerks at headquarters took him from us. From that point on, the sole purpose of Dakan al-Ahmar became revenge. The big fire that boss started was quite a blow to headquarters' strength. It's given us the opportunity to launch our attack. Even though we're outnumbered, we vowed to see our revenge through to the very end. There were people from headquarters who changed their names and went into hiding. Some fled to other brigades, and others escaped to the rainforest. But we won't let any of them escape our wrath. They'll all pay for what they've done. We've suffered plenty of losses as well. To keep going, we need an enormous amount of supplies. From food and medicine to weaponry and explosives. All we can do is exchange our loot for Mora, and then use that to get supplies. We forged Boss's handwriting and sent out many letters to his former friends. Thankfully, many people were willing to come to our aid. We were also able to attract many mercenaries who shared our goal. We've endured unspeakable pain to win many impossible battles. Deshret's relics have become weaker and weaker, and now we finally have an opportunity to directly strike their headquarters. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what to say anymore. <laughs> we do know right from wrong, but we were sinners from the very beginning. We do not deserve the freedom that the boss won for us with his life. Boss always loved his old-fashioned hero stories. Those tales about sacrificing yourself to save the world, we used to always laugh at him for it. But in the end, he really went and lived those stories out himself. As for me, I never considered myself a hero. We're all the lowest of the low. We have no right to even imagine such an existence, but... Maybe those hero stories he liked foreshadowed everything that was to come. The spirit of the hero touched all those he had saved, and more and more people joined his cause. Maybe we were all just acting along with the play in the beginning. But as we acted the parts and recited the lines, we were drawn in. And now, we want to see the story through to the end. I'm sorry, dear. I know you always found us insufferable ever since you were young. Just think of this as a madman ranting. I'll go with you. Huh? Dia? You- I grew up with these guys, and I know they're not bad people. It's just that some situations get so bad that it's difficult to tell good from evil. All I know is that Deshret's relics must be destroyed. Furthermore, I want to go see the place for myself. I want to know if my father is still there. I know you don't want to get involved in this, so there's no need for you to tag along. I can do this on my own. Yeah, Paimon feels like we'd only regret it if we don't see this through to the end. <sighs> Thank you. We'll be a lot stronger together with you. <laughs> I bet Boss would lose his mind if he ever knew you'd join us at the very last moment like this. Considering all the losses and injuries we sustain, we can't afford to turn down someone as powerful as you. He can think whatever he wants, <sighs> but the fact is, I owe him this much.
Should be. I don't think they have enough manpower left to post guards and defend their perimeters. expected to look like this on the inside they should all be holed up in here don't know how many people they've got left though who cares we'll round up all of them still we should be careful even if they've only got one shot left it could still take us out yeah we'll know what they're really capable of once we've landed some hits on them deshret's relics may have been a force to be reckoned with before but their name means nothing now yeah they don't stand a chance with you here I'll take the lead. I've been here once before. You are not welcome here. No, my sword! Right. 
today. Speed of light. The wind smells me. This way, follow me. We're almost there. Wait! They went charging ahead without checking for any traps! Hey, you guys okay? <sighs> it seems like we just got trapped in here. Don't think we triggered anything else. Watch out! The enemy's coming from ahead! Well... Now that things have come to this, seems we'll have to fight our way through. Don't worry about us. We knew something like this could happen. Go and take a look around. There could still be another way through. Let's go! We can't let the boss down! Let's check if there's another way! The sooner we can make it through to help them, the better! Let's see. I think I see a way through over there, but it's being blocked. Okay, let's... Outlines your fate. Huh? We're dead meat. Buckle up. Hi. Another mechanism like the one before, but this one's being blocked off in the middle. We just need to adjust it a little.
I wasn't expecting anyone to make it through from the other side. But as a desert dweller, I suppose we should be used to our folks defying all expectations. Don't waste your breath. You have nowhere to run. Run? <laughs> Had I wanted to run, I would have fled a thousand times already. I witnessed the golden age of Deshret's relics. Even if I could leave this place behind, all that awaits me now are endless days of humiliation and ruin! Even now, my brothers and I still believe in one thing. The greatest should never live to remember their fall. Hm. So you want to go out in a blaze of glory? Let us draw our weapons! We will show them the true power King Deshret bestowed upon his followers. They are but two, while we hold within ourselves the entirety of the relic's glory. Wave one, charge! Eliminate them! One with nature. Gloves off! I'll take that. Don't think that you won. We're just getting started. My knife. Nowhere to hide. Don't blink. How? <laughs> King Deshret will not abandon any one of his followers. I'm getting the fight. The wind knows me. Look alive! You asked for it! Will! Oh. Brothers! With me, this is where we'll be our way. Do you all just want to die? None of us plan to leave this place alive! Goodbye. Lord of Seville again. Your sacrifice is ready. Let's get it on. Golden slumber. The commander has finally fallen. But they're still coming at us. This place is like a gladiator's ring. They just keep coming no matter how many we beat. Yes, keep fighting. There's no need to fear, and no need to back down! This is our last stand! When the next wave comes, try to draw away their attacks. I'm going to see if I can take out that high platform. Get out of my way! Come and face me, Michel! Ugh. So they've broken through the front as well. Apologies, Lord Michal. They just... they fight like absolute madmen. No matter how much we throw at them, they just keep coming for more. So, it would seem like this is the end. Time to pay for everything you've done, Michel. <laughs> you think I would give you that opportunity? I will be buried in the sand alongside all the rest of our fading glory. Hey, wait! We were too late. It's over. There's no more need to fight. But if you're still going to cling on to your so-called mercenary's pride, then I'll give you all a good beating as well. <laughs> hey, dear! I found the mechanism. I'll get you all back up here right away. Let's go.
are you filthy rats? And why are you always pestering us? Heh. <laughs> you call yourself a member of the infamous Deshret's relics, and you still can't even tell who's made it all the way to your headquarters? <laughs> Who knows what intent a bunch of rats may have? We try to catch a couple, and you all just show up on the other side instead. How are we supposed to figure out what you're after? Hey, have you ever heard of a man by the name of Kusela? <laughs> Why would I know? It's not like I'm in charge or anything. This is your last chance to talk. H hey, I, I said I don't know anything. I'm just an average member here. I'm telling the truth. If you're here to find someone, why don't you look through the records yourselves? Who can remember every name and face with so many people coming in and out every day? The irony. His life became a light for so many, yet to others, it wasn't even worth remembering. Where's the records room? Answer me! It's right over there. All the files are in there. You can go through them as much as you want. It's not like any of them still matter anyway. I mean the old records room. The, the old records room? You mean, the one that got burned down? Kusela. Ah, yeah, I remember him now. The guy who could hardly walk. Watch your mouth. That's our boss you're talking about. He was definitely faking it. We all let our guard down as soon as we saw him come hobbling in. But in the short time it supposedly took him to take a dump, he'd already gotten away and started a fire in the records room. He couldn't have possibly outrun us if he wasn't a fraud. And after that... Deshret's relics fell into complete disarray. Stop wasting our time. Every one of us here is perfectly aware of what he had done. Tell me, where is the old records room? It's just over there. Go see it for yourself if it means that much to you. There's nothing left in there but ashes. No human could ever survive that kind of inferno. Bashar, Tikriti, let's go. We'll leave the others here to guard these guys. Spare them no mercy if they try anything. So, this was his final destination. How did he do it? Getting past all the guards with a limp and sneaking in here to start a fire? If he was nimble enough to do that, then he must have been able to get out of here after starting the fire, right? Tia... I'm sorry. I know it's just wishful thinking. Let's look around. Maybe we can find something that's been left behind. that Dia's father used. Kusela. Thanks for everything, boss. We're fortunate to somehow find that cane after that fire. Let's split up and look around some more. What if something else has been left behind? But what else could survive a fire like that? Huh? Is no more. The Princess Dia has slain it. Its head now hangs above the city gates. Her bravery has brought eternal peace and prosperity to us all. Dia, come on. This is the most important mine. Um, um, you can do it. But Dia, you defeated the dragon. Everyone's waiting for your speech. <laughs> <laughs> Still too shy, huh? All right, I'll do it. I hereby proclaim our victory! Evil shall plague us no more! I hereby... 
proclaim our victory. Evil shall plague us no more, Dad. What's this? Don't you remember? You asked Paimon what she would do if she were to wake up tomorrow with loads of money. And Paimon said that she would get boatloads of tasty snacks. You looked super confused at the time, but said it was an adorable thing to say. These opportunities don't come by often. So today, Paimon's gonna treat you to a special crash course on Paimon's life philosophy. Hey, come on! Paimon's not that stingy. Anyway, the point is that you should eat to your heart's content. You'll feel better for sure once you've gotten something in your tummy. Junior and Dad will also be here shortly. She's already heard that we're back. Aw, thanks, you two. Honestly, this is very unlike me. I just had a lot on my mind on our way back, so I didn't know what to say. My chest was filled with all kinds of intense emotions. They just shook me even more than all the feelings we've shared during our previous adventures. But when everything came to an end, those emotions also vanished without a trace. And I was left feeling more empty than ever before. It was as if I'd lost the thing that was most important to me. Yeah, you're right. To many mercenaries, Mora is the most important thing in the world. But perhaps to us, it's the most worthless thing of all. Idrisi and the others all used to say that they would quit if there was no Mora to be had. But when it came to avenging my father, there was no Mora to be made anywhere. My reality shattered when I found out that the father who always told me hero stories was in fact a bad guy. But look at me now. Am I any different? Despite all my promises about never forgiving him and never trying to understand him, I still went to such lengths to find out the truth and nearly even shed tears for his sake. We're hypocrites, all of us. Yeah, you're right. It's just a pity that we often only recognize our true feelings after it's already too late. You're back! Are all of you all right? Ah, there she is. Yeah. Many people from the Corps of Thirty came over, and I just wrapped up everything with my dad. All I can do now is wait for their verdict. Huh? Dia, you're looking quite down again. Paima will explain. A lot happened while we were gone. <sighs> I'm sorry. I really should have controlled my emotions better. I, I just... I just... It's all right, my lady. You were hurt by all of this as well. Truth be told, I'm starting to feel a little guilty watching you cry like this. <laughs> Medea, now your pain must be even worse. You shouldn't need to comfort me. Hey, don't worry about me. If anything, this whole thing has finally shown me the difference between illusion and reality. My father probably thought that people could settle into new lives as long as they moved to a new environment. That thought has even crossed my mind a few times. It's like saying, what's wrong with adapting to a new life? However, there was always something deep within my mind that refused to accept it. This impulse brought me great turmoil, and even made me feel ashamed for turning my back on your father's kindness. But now that I consider it again, it all makes sense. The desert sands are a part of who I am, and I will never be able to lead a peaceful existence. I understand how you feel. That doesn't mean I won't be making any changes to my life, though. As an example, I'm now thinking about taking on some small odd jobs. It's just like Idrisi said. 
I also want to catch up to my father and become a character in his play. Even if the ending of the story may be childish and ridiculous, it won't really matter. Isn't that neat, though? Oh, you'll be a whole new kind of mercenary, one that's not out for Mora. Why don't we go for a change of scenery once we finish eating? Uh, what about stopping by the Grand Bazaar again? Right. You said you wanted to get a rug for your family. We'll come along, too. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for taking care of me this entire time. This rug here is quite something. The craftsmanship is exquisite, and the fabric is also of high quality. Ah, here you are. Finally, I found you. Hey, uh, aren't you that mercenary who bit his tongue? You can still talk? Wait, are you here to take revenge on us? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do I look like I could take you all in a fight? I just came here to give you something. I'll be on my way to give myself up to the core after this. Once I woke up, I hurried to the Khan al Ahmar's camp, hoping to alert them to your presence. But when I got there, I found no one except the members who were still too injured to move. Ah, so you probably got there after us. Yeah, they told me that they had exacted their revenge, and everyone had turned themselves into the authorities. Even that last camp was not going to last for much longer. I had joined the cause to repay an old favor from Kusela. Now that everyone's already turned themselves in, I might as well do the same. One of the injured members gave this box to me, and told me that it contained some of the old man's last possessions. Everything left in the camp will get confiscated, so I figured I should get this to you before the Corps could get their hands on it. Thank you. No worries. We are all just living our own truths. There's no need to comment or judge anyone for it. So this box contains everything that Dia's father left behind. Well, back in the day, the first thing he did with any Mora was spend it on things like drinks and meat. But let's see what's inside. Wh what's this? Uh, it's just a bunch of junk. It, ugh, kind of st- uh. Perhaps it's just been left unopened. Hmm. A handwritten copy of a storybook. The paper's already yellowed, and it looks like it's about to fall apart. It was against the Academia's rules to possess books for personal use. <sighs> if he was going to break that rule, he could have at least copied something useful. That probably means this was really important to him. Ah, and here are a few bags of children's snacks. The packaging's completely deteriorated. Maybe that's where the smell was coming from. Did he get those for you? Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Even when I was a child, I was never a fan of these kinds of snacks. He'd always say that he got them for me, but in the end, he always ate more than I ever did. Who even leaves snacks in a box like this anyway? Isn't that just common sense? <sighs> Forget it. Let me see what else is in here. Mmm, a razor, some buttons... Some round iron tiles, a wooden toy puppet, a wool scarf, which from the looks of it probably belonged to a woman, and a hair clip? Uh, why are these things here? Uh, I, 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 I'm uh, suddenly feeling a little scared. I'm sorry, my lady, but this is just the kind of man he was. He probably saw this box as some kind of personal trash heap and dumped any and everything in there. One... No, two empty liquor bottles. Ugh, tell me, you guys, are these the kinds of things that a normal person would leave behind? Huh? There's something in the bottle! Oh, you're right. Ugh, all right, I got it out. It seems to be a piece of paper with some writing on it. 
The bottom part's all damaged from moisture, though. Let's hope the writing didn't smudge. I was suddenly seized with an urge to write a letter after finishing this bottle. I just folded it up and left it in the bottle, though. If I end up forgetting about it, it won't really matter. To Dia. <gasps> it's a letter for me? It's all right. I'll just read it out. If he went to the trouble of writing a letter, there must have been some important things that he wanted to say. Or at least, record down. My condition's becoming worse and worse. Can't even walk without a cane anymore. Much less go out and have fun. Guess I don't have many days left. If you're reading this letter, then I suppose I'm already long gone. You were adorable as a baby. Everyone loved you. And regardless of whether you were crying or laughing, everyone enjoyed having you in the group. But once you grew a bit older, you were no longer nearly as happy or cute. It's probably Idrisi's fault. <laughs> he was never up to any good. <laughs> can you believe this guy? He can point the finger at himself. Anyway, back to the point. To summarize, I'm writing this so you would know not to feel sad for me, even if you end up finding out the truth. The reason being that... <laughs> I was never your father to begin with. Wait, what? Surely, uh, he must be joking, right? I... I don't know. <laughs> uh, I was quite formidable when I was young, and a hundred times cooler than some so-called flame mane. <laughs> really felt like the whole world was under my feet. With just a teeny tiny bit of effort, I felt I could rule over the entire desert. But as fate would have it, I went out into the desert for a drink one day, and discovered a baby in the sands. It was you. You were just lying there, small and helpless. You were so tiny that if the wind blew for just a little while longer, you would have been buried forever. But your cries were so loud, they made my head hurt. <laughs> now that I think of it, you really were a bundle of energy. Uh, sounds like he's serious. I told Idrisi and the others that I had slipped up with a woman while out and about. <laughs> None of them even doubted me. I'm sorry that I had to lie to them for so long, but I really had no other choice. I was their most esteemed leader, after all. I'd like her to just tell them that I suddenly wanted to play at being a father. <laughs> ah, at this rate, I'll puke up all the liquor I just drank from this bottle. <laughs> Anyway, dear, you possess the kind of freedom and kindness that we could only dream of. As far as how you should live your life, that'll be up to you to decide. That's the end of the letter. In the end, he was still thinking of me as a little child. I suppose, or I would have suffocated under the sand a long time ago. He was a good father to you. The fact that he wasn't a blood relative doesn't change that. Yeah. It's just a pity that we had to learn the truth of everything like this. Do you already have some ideas about the decision that he wanted you to make? I do. If he first found me alone in the sands, then I want to try my hand at finding the person who abandoned me. I just have one wish. To tell them a story. That there once existed a childish and foolish jerk with a heart of gold and that only under his care was I able to grow and mature into the person I am today. If you end up finding any leads, can you share them with us? We go on adventures all the time. Maybe we'll be able to find some information for you. <sighs> sure, I appreciate it. I wasn't expecting you to be so enthusiastic. I'll help too. Thank you. All of you. Thank you so much. My life has certainly had its twists and turns, but I've always considered myself lucky. Because no matter where I've gone, I've always been surrounded by incredible kindness. Yeah.